Today I find myself at the Barber Junction of the North Carolina Train Museum, or Transportation Museum, I guess you should say, because it does involve more than trains or buses and trucks and whatnot here. And judging by the parking lot, I am the ninth car here. So like Clark Griswold said, first one's in, first one's out. Um, not a lot of people going on this Friday afternoon, but uh, it's been a quite the dichotomy of days anyway because this morning it was like 12 degrees and rainy and uh, it's starting to look like a beautiful day so been here a long time ago and uh as with me <laughs> anything with a throttle i'm in love with so i think this place is kind of fascinating so we're gonna walk around and uh see what we get into so uh fasten your lap belts tighten your chin strap and uh we'll see if we can get them to cut the stupid music off and see how this goes bought my ticket as you can see I'm legit because they gave me a uh, wristband there's probably like 14 people paid to come be here today and uh, I find it odd that you got to wear a wristband because cost six dollars getting this place hell of a deal but uh who's risking that kind of crap for uh, jumping a fence and having a not having the wristband with them but nevertheless we're all ready to go into the uh, abyss of transportation. Behind me is the two football field large back shop of this place with a slogan on the side that when this place came to be in 1896, it's probably a big precursor to OSHA violations, but it says be careful. And along with ma'am, sir, thank you and you're welcome. Those five things could really bring a lot of prominence to where we're at in this world. So be careful out there, folks. Be careful. There's a lot of danger afoot. I sit here at the backdrop of downtown Spencer, North Carolina. Spencer, North Carolina, home of about 3,700 people. It's like a, three times the size of my high school. It's kind of a small town, More like three square miles or something like this. And this is clearly one of the, if not the clear and obvious winner of a top draws to the community um but this was uh this was started from the southern railway uh they needed another what they'd call back shop basically a workshop for trains that would break down mostly steam and then in the early 40s they brought in diesel locomotives um to this place hauled in by steam locomotives of course but they needed a place somewhere between atlanta and dc knoxville and atlanta uh that could kind of cut the the mix between you know, breaking down uh, in between those areas. And they, they chose this place because it was roughly 160 miles or so by track uh, as a good place to rest your laurels and bring your motor in. Let's get the thing worked on. So yeah, small town, a lot of history. This little caisson wagon has got room for four people that I don't know how you would fit them all in here. You know what this reminds me of? Is this the Willy Wonka grandparents' bed version of a vehicle? Because everybody's feet would be all entangled. And why the hell were those four people sleeping together? That was so weird. That was the weirdest part of that stupid movie. Here we have a 1951 locomotive, 70 feet long, capable of 98 miles per hour, holds like 1,200 pounds of sand, and you've got uh, two V12 diesels that are 567 cubic inches a piece, 1125 horsepower a piece for a total of 2250, 200 gallons of coolant. That is a massive machine and weighs in about 314,000 pounds, retired here in 1980. I gotta tell you, you just can't get enough masculinity out of this stuff. The testosterone that just oozes out of this building, which by the way is quite large as evidenced by this gantry route that goes all the way to the other end of the two football field length place. Very amazing, very amazing. It's just amazing what we were able to make in this country over the years. Now about to enter the roundhouse. I was warned at the visitor center, don't be spinning around kicking things because it's just not warranted here, but if need be, I've been known to cut a little rug. It is amazing how massive these things are. 
you know, I'm seven foot two and this thing just towers over me. This is actually one of the ones that was a holdover. There were like 200 of these things they made for Russia. And then the Bolshevik revolution happens and uh, Lenin and Trotsky take over. Funny story about Trotsky. Trotsky was killed with an ice ax, the ad side of it, which is more like a spade or a hoe, kind of the, you know, basically a guy comes in and just buries it into his head. And here's the cool part about it. Leon Trotsky has an ice ax buried into his head about two and a half inches and has the presence to stand up and spit on the guy that did it. I can only ask to be that cool if anybody ever attacks me with an ice ax. So what you need to know about engines is pretty cool. How they classify these things is by lead wheels, drive wheels, which are obviously connected to the engine by these bars, and then your trailing wheels back there. And so you count them. It's very simple. So this would be a four, six, and an eight. So a four, six, eight engine. And that's how you do it. You could have a 210 like the last ones, the Russian ones. Um, and that's kind of how they classify engines. Pretty neat, but it makes no sense when you first read it. Here we have one of their cabooses. And I just wanted to show up because I wanted to say the word cupola. Cupola. This is where they actively work on trains. And they had an eight foot metal break over there, among others, some really cool industrial things that I may be coming here to volunteer my time on the weekends because this would be a blast to come and do. To work on trains with other people's tools. That's awesome. Case in point. Oh, that would be a blast to mess with. Mm. Ask and ye shall receive an ads. A la Leon Trotsky's skull. Mm. Imagine that being buried into your face. Crazy. Periatal bone. Second only to taking off your shin guards after a miserably hot summer soccer game. This right here, this throttle, is so satisfying to engage. I need one of these in my house. This is so cool. I feel like I'm eight. Here we have the U.S. Army medical train, which I feel like it smells a lot like dip diphtheria and malaria and a lot of other communicable diseases only imagine the stories these walls can tell the 1926 passenger car and i gotta tell you these seats i won't let you in there but i imagine this smells a lot like that bus at daryl's restaurant that that gorilla drove if you are anywhere near greensboro history currently sitting in the cupola of a cabusola. It's a pretty cool little job right here. You got the lay of the land. This is, the seat is like rather comfortable too. I don't know exactly what the flag man would do other than just wait and look for flags and try not to fall asleep because this would be a boring job, but at least the seat's comfortable. I just paid a dollar to ride this roundhouse roundabout. Roundabout. They should play yes roundabout when this goes off. That'd be kind of cool. Think equals careful. What that says at the bottom there. I don't know why, but uh, it does. It's a little faster than you think. That is, that is a massive piece of machinery right there. I like it. Went in Spencer. Went in Salisbury. It is a delectable drink that you don't really consider drinking enough. But you kind of got to do it when you're in Rowan County, as we are. Nine cars in the parking lot. Even if they're full, there's 30-some people here, but there's not. I mean, I think I, I passed like seven people. They've got three employees at the gift station. <laughs> I think they need to up their prices. Six dollars? I bought this for a dollar. Take It costs a dollar to ride the round table, the round house. Man, up this stuff. This is like $13.50 all day long, okay? Make some money out here. You shouldn't have a donation box. This is too cool of a place to be charging $6. I'm, I'm $8 into this, and I got a cheer wine out of it. Come on, man. Let's just tighten it up. Like, it's 2022. People can afford things. They say they can't, but they can. <laughs> 